For this video, I'm going to be sharing one of the two Damasian based control decks that I was playing a lot when I was climbing from silver to gold. Specifically, these decks were built to kind of counter the things that I was seeing a lot on the ladder. I was seeing a lot of elusives and I was seeing a lot of spiders, whether that meant Dawn spiders with the Damasia package or the Noxus based spiders with Darius on the top end. Now, this particular list is Damasia and Freljord control and it's going to feature a lot of challenge units some frostbite and then essentially you're just trying to stall until you can get to where you can land she who wanders which crushes those two decks pretty effectively so we're going to go through the list and then like i always do we're going to include a game afterwards you can kind of see the deck in action now uh, for the one drops, Fleet Feather Tracker. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm very high on this card. It attacks for two. It's a one drop. When you give it Challenger, it often trades up. It's just a quality unit. And we are pairing it with Omen Hawk, which is a pretty standard inclusion in most of your Frail Yord lists, specifically the control ones, because uh, this can boost some of your other early game units that you then kind of snowball stall with, if that makes sense. It's also really powerful if it lands on somebody like Braum, because then Braum can actually trade with things using his big body challenger and regenerate. So Omen Hawk is the other one drop. Everos and Sentry is one of my favorite cards in Freljord. It's just amazing. I mean, it doesn't look like it's doing a whole lot here, but a two one for two that cycles itself, essentially when it dies, you draw one is pretty good and it's fantastic at stalling, and we like it. One single combat as uh, potential removal, but also it's in here because we're running cards like Fiora, and then later on you're going to see cards like Radiant Guardian, and being able to just get yourself a burst of life off of something like Radiant Guardian is a pretty big deal. So I'm a big fan of single combat. Sometimes you can be cheeky, and even if you're not using this as removal, you can use this to sneak in some additional damage on Braum, if it's going to be the difference between him leveling up before trading in or not, or after he's leveled up, it's another great way to give yourself an additional Poro. So as a one of, I like it. There's uh, some neat tricks. All right, three drops. Two Braum. This is really just a stall tactic. Like if you ever get to level him up, great. You can make some Poros. It's not part of your actual game plan. This is mostly here because of the challenger the possibility of getting buffed by the Hawks and the Hearth Guards, and because he stalls. Now, does die to a lot of things because of the low attack value, but you can also use that to your advantage. When you're playing against decks that you think might be running Rasa, for example, uh, you can use Braum as a shield, and that's kind of his job, but you can use him to protect some of your other units just by playing him on a turn where you're expecting someone to want to Rasa your board. Fiora is really here just as a, a challenger unit. She's basically a three drop with challenger. If you accidentally win with her, fine. And we do run judgment near the top end. So if you get the opportunity to combo with her in judgment, also fine. But that is not your game plan for this list. It is a trap to go all in trying to make it work. Again, you're going to have tools to accidentally do it between judgment. You do have the one single combat. You've got some frostbite effects. So, you know, take those opportunities, but don't go all in. Do not fall for the trap. Again, think of Fiora here as just a 3-3 challenger. Now, the bonus is, is that people tend to go overboard and they see a Fiora and they panic and they want to kill her. And so she eats some pretty premium removal at times. And that also works to your benefit. The other reason I like her over just other challenger units at the three slot, because things like Laurent Prodigy, uh, I'm slaughtering that pronunciation, by the way. Thank you, Midwestern accent. Uh, this card's actually really solid, and the 2-4 stat line is, in some instances, arguably better than a 3-3 because it dies to less removal. But we run Fiora because of her upside. We run Fiora because if you've got one on the board and you draw a second one, it becomes a combat trick, which the other units do not do. And we run Fiora because of the 3 attack there's a lot of fearsome running around because of the Noxus Shadow Isle spider deck. And that three attack actually is very relevant at the moment. So that's why we run three copies of her. I'm going to skip ahead to the other two, though. I'm running two and two of Protege and Rhyme Fang Wolf because I just want more challenger units. I want to be able to contest the board early on. 
And I'm running two and two because Rhyme Fang again has that three attack, so it's very good at getting in front of some of the fearsome units if you're playing against that list. And uh, because of our frostbite effects, you can sometimes get extra value out of it. This is the reverse. This is a card that tends to do really well against elusive decks if you get it early, because you can typically get uh, a two for one out of it. You trade with one of you know, the 2-2 two, two elusives or the 2-1 elusive, and then turn around on the following turn and challenge again. So it's a very efficient card when you're trying to contest the board, and so we run 2-2. Two and two. Uh, The other 3-drop that I skipped to get to that point is Flash Freeze, and we're running a pair of them just as a stall tactic. Uh, specifically in this list, I like to run this, and there's also two Harsh Winds that you'll see later because they're burst speed, and so when you're playing against elusives and you're just trying to stall to get to your end game, this card is great because it cannot be denied. It cannot be denied. It cannot be denied. That is always a great feeling when you can shut down somebody's combat round and there's nothing they can do about it. So two flash freezes. Keep it on here. Uh, avalanche. This is a very standard. If you're running Freljord Control, you're running three Avalanche. And it is really good against the spider lists. It can sometimes be great against folks not playing around it in the elusive lists, so straightforward. Uh, also running Babbling Bjerg. Babbling Bjerg basically is a 3-3 draw a card, and again, the three attack matters more than it looks because this can block those pesky fearsome units while replacing himself with the draw effect. All right, top end. Uh, we're running three Hearth Guards. These are most commonly what you are going to see found with Bjerg. Uh, between this and the Guardian, and I say most commonly just because numbers kind of go in that favor. And this is here, again, to buff the rest of your deck, like you would expect. But the reason that buffing your deck is important in a list like this is because it means those Challenger units are not as... Oh, they're not as much of a wasted draw when you draw them in the late game, right? Sometimes you draw those Fleet Feather Trackers and, you know, it's turn 9... And you're bummed out. But if you've buffed your deck once or twice by then, and there's suddenly a challenger unit that can attack for four, then it's not as bad to have drawn your one drop. So this is really kind of about mitigation because we're running so many. I mean, if we look at our curve here real quick, right? We're running so many early game drops to contest the board that we need something that makes them, you know, not as punishable if you draw them late and that's what hearth guard is really here for uh the other five drop is radiant guardian and this should be pretty self-explanatory we got a lot of challenger units we're forcing combat our units are going to die plopping this down is huge against aggressive decks because the lifesteal is very relevant the tough makes it resilient i love this card it's the reason that i'm honestly playing demacian control because i think this is the best card at trying to stabilize your board uh, in the game that's not named rasa so I am a huge fan, and we're running them. Also, a thing to note, this card will gain you life when you are using, I know I mentioned it earlier, but I want to repeat it, single combat, because you gain life whenever it deals damage. Specifically here, I'll just mouse over it. This uh, unit heals the Nexus the amount of damage that it deals. So that means attacking, blocking, or when you're making it strike other units, and uh, that'll come up again in a moment. Um, Harsh Winds, I mentioned it earlier when we were looking at the other Frostbite effect. Same concept. This is a stall tactic at burst speed, so it cannot be denied, just buying you time to get to your late game. And then we have one Anivia as uh, one of essentially your three finishers, but this is meant to be an annoying one. That's why we run it as a one of, but if you do get it up and running, uh, they essentially have to spend multiple resources traditionally to get rid of her all the way. It also... It's it's a closer, not just because it doesn't die, but because it routinely wipes the board over and over, right? Like, there's a lot of value that Anivia generates just inherently. And then for our top-end board sweepers, I'm running two Judgment and two She Who Wanders. Judgment is very important, and it's the reason that I think Demacian Control is actually in a pretty decent spot. Because against non-Ionian lists, Judgment is fantastic. I guess Ionia lists, you have to play around deny, you have to be very smart. Sometimes they have it and you just lose, but if you can uh, bait the denies out using some of your earlier cards, if you can 
get a quality judgment off when they don't have mana. Sometimes you get them to play things when it looks like you're going to pass for a round. And here's a, a neat trick with judgment. Uh, judgment only strikes battling allies, or excuse me, enemies, battling enemies. So you can use your allies to challenge enemies. So if you've got like three challenger units and you don't think that they're going to block you because they fear judgment, you can just force them into it anyway. That's one of the perks of running so many challenger units. So if you see them run out of mana and they're on Ionia, sometimes that's the way that you go, right? You challenge their units and then you play the judgment. But the key here is, is that uh, judgment is very often a one-sided board sweep, taking out multiple units. And if you play it on your Radiant Guardian, you'll heal that amount. If you're coming from the Elder Scrolls Legends, that should probably sound pretty familiar. And that's because it's Unstoppable Rage, essentially. Now, the one caveat is, is that Overwhelm in this game, like what Trindamir has, is not the same as Breakthrough was in Legends. So you cannot kill somebody with Overwhelm damage with Judgment, but you can absolutely heal yourself all the way back up to 20. And it's very effective. It's a very good combo. The other reason that we really like Judgment, again, is Fiora. Sometimes you just accidentally win. You're not trying to get her to win with her alternate win condition, but if she's on the board and you play a Judgment and she kills four enemies, or if she's already got some stacks on her and she kills enough with Judgment to get her trigger, you will win the game that way. Um, I've got a video on my YouTube channel from the preview event where I pull it off. So, again, Judgment is in here for a number of reasons. It just fits the deck incredibly well. It's a very powerful tool. Uh, the other sweeper is She Who Wanders. And this is all about getting that 10-10 body on the board, but also obliterating all followers for or less power in play and in hands. Now, this is also the reason why we're running the Hawks and the Averos and Hearthguards, because we want to get our followers up to values where maybe they don't get blown up by She Who Wanders. Sometimes you do have to blow up your own board as well, but it's entirely worth it. But the idea is, is that if you keep buffing the stuff in your deck, you might be able to play this and it will further impact your opponent that much more than you. I've played this a number of times and people have just already conceded because not only does it wipe their board, but it takes out, you know, two or three cards from their hand. The other nice thing is because it is obliterate, you do not have to worry about last gasp effects. So those pesky undying cards, those annoying cursed keeper cards, they will not, you know, respawn in the case of undying. They will not make a 4-4. In the case of the keeper, if you're playing in control mirrors and you're worried about the sentries drawing them cards, again, this prevents that. So very powerful card. This is kind of what you're stalling for, right? You're trying to stall for as long as possible until you can get to judgment to wipe their board or she who wanders. And that's the list. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and jump on the ladder and play a game so that you can kind of see it in action. All right, so this actually might be a bit of a tough matchup. And I, I say that strictly because this is going to be ephemeral. Yeah, we'll keep this. But it's an ephemeral build that uses Zed, which means they're also running Deny and... Deny is a, a bit of a pain. The chains, they never stop! As, as I was saying before, I think we actually just pass here. As I was saying before, I think that Deny is maybe your worst matchup just because of Judgment. Now, that's not to say that it is unwinnable. You can absolutely still get to where you need to be. But you have to be smart about how you play things. You have to play around Deny. You've got to get the value when you can. Yeah, I think we just let this go as well. And then we're going to have the decision to make between Fiora or Braum, but people tend to panic more against Fiora. Always two steps ahead. So I think we do this. Plus, it means the other one becomes a combat trick. It just gives us a bit more flexibility and versatility going this route. gonna make these trades leave this to block that Do you remember when I said people panic 
Yeah, sure. People just do not, I repeat, do not like Fiora. All right, now th this is also potentially problematic for us just because this is not something that we can effectively get rid of often. Some Sometimes when it's late and they play it and you get the opportunity, you get to be extra sneaky and work That's in. Um, I think we're actually gonna do things a little weird and we're just gonna go with Brom because this blocks here. Technically, we'd like to play this and then Brom, but I don't know if they're gonna keep playing before the attack, so. This is probably a relic. Oh, no, they're just gonna draw some cards. I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm not. I don't want them drawing cards for what I feel are pretty obvious reasons, but there's nothing we can do about it. All right, they only have the one here. You are safe with so we do this. I just have to decide, do I want to just take this trade now? Because if we wait even one turn, we can play Radiant Guardian off of a trade like this the following turn, which is a pretty big deal. Because we, if we want to play Radiant Guardian next turn, we cannot develop another unit to give this challenger. So I actually think that we just block the four here. Because activating this is very, very relevant. Now this is, you know, obviously a little bit risky because they could have something like a Vile Feast to uh, remove our Brom. But the big reason we want to do it is because that means next turn, without attacking, if we play something like uh, Avalanche, I fight for the we can fallen. level him up pretty directly. Now these are also really important for this Undying matchup, because this card, like you don't want to block it, but you can't leave it. All right, so they're gonna play some spirits. Which is also gonna bring out the Shark Chariot when they attack. We're just gonna go ahead and play another Fiora then. There was a temptation to maybe Avalanche there. But again, we're, we're trying to not kill this Undying as much as possible. Because we can just put Brahm, Brahm in front of that for what feels like forever, anyway. Help is on the way. Good sequencing by them. Do I want to get one kill on our Fiora? I think the answer is no. So again, this is where that whole like trap thing comes into play like I was talking about. On the one hand, getting her a free kill here would be very tempting. But you want to save her for value kills. And we're going to take two damage. And then when this hits here, we're just going to heal it right back up anyway. So there is zero reason for us to waste her health like that. <laughs> From getting level here is exciting. A potential win condition for us. Believe it or not. Uh, we'll go ahead and... Scream! Play the hawk. Because right now we're, we're just kind of dominating the board. Okay. I mean, overall, we're fine with that. Until they pull off a Rasa to nuke our Brom, Brom's just going to tank this Undying forever. Like, from now until the end of time. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here about these. Banish! 
crush the unworthy! Have you met my shield? I've just got a temptation to trade this Fiora for the 3-3 now. And I think I'm going to. Because I also want a death, because I want to get another Guardian down. And it also means we can push some additional damage. So I think that this is probably correct. Like I said, Fiora is not our win condition. If you accidentally win with her, great. That's a lot of uh, a lot of them dying, but we're just gonna keep playing Radiant Guardians because if they hit us, then we just heal right back. Pledge yourself to the shadows. We can wait. Right now, if they attack with everything, they don't even get full value because Zed makes a clone and then there's also the Chariot and you can only have six on the field. So yeah, they're going to leave the 4-4. Four four. And so we want to take at least some damage before... I will end this here. Let's see, this gets here. I guess this can block here because we want him to make a Poro. And then we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, they have three cards in hand. They have the option for fast effects if they've got buffs, but for the most part here, because of sequencing, right? Because of sequencing, we take damage, but then we heal. If you're wondering why I used the flash freeze effects the way that I did, even though these were unblocked, we knew, yeah, this is fine, that we were gonna heal back up, right? Everything always resolves left or right. So if you've got life steal over here, but you're taking damage along the way, it's entirely fine. And uh, I think this is it. Pretty sure this is game because of our challenger bird and our challenger Brom. So we open with an attack and ordering again matters. Then Poros, then Brom, then Bird. And Brom would like this for four, and the bird would like this. So they've got to have fast effects here or else, and that's it. So, I, I didn't get to do any of the flashy endgame stuff here, no judgment, no she who wanders, but you got to see how the challenger units can really impact a board, and you got to see specifically how the Radiant Guardians help you stabilize. As I said before, they're a big part of the reason why I'm personally running Demacia Base Control, and I've, I've been trying other things, but whenever I want to climb, uh, Demacia Base Control has been what I've been using. It's been this deck, and then there's another version that I'm probably going to be sharing tomorrow, and that is Demacia and Shadow Isles. So, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching. If it's your first time, consider subbing. Uh, do all the things. Follow me on social media, blah, blah, blah. But most importantly, when you're playing Runeterra, remember to have fun. And for for my buddy, you know who you are. I'm going to say the words. When I, when I made the Elder Scrolls Legends content... I used to close with one of the Khajiit phrases from that game. So for them, until next time, may you walk on warm sands.